hey what's up guys and welcome back to anime king and today i'm going to be giving you part two of what if naruto was sent to the marvel world naruto x marvel crossover yeah guys remember to get this one to 100 like as usual share this to all of your friends in social media platform and also stay in tune because after this i'm going to be posting a new episode of what if kaguya was naruto's mother and over on Anime King 2, I'm going to be posting what if Naruto was a god amongst man. So stay in tune for that and I hope you guys enjoy. And later on, I'm going to be posting what if Orochimaru was Naruto's father. So stay in tune for that and I hope you guys enjoy as well guys. And remember, if you're new and it's the first time you hear my voice and you enjoy the videos on both Anime King and Anime King 2, go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become part of the Anime King family. And thank you for all of your help and your support. And remember to comment down below and tell me if you're new. And yeah, without further ado, let's begin the intro. So, the last part we left off, Sasuke and Naruto was fighting Kaguya, as the Sage of Six Path grant them the power to seal her away. As Kaguya used her instant kill, the bones, to try and stab Naruto. As Sasuke tried to switch Naruto but he accidentally used a wrong jutsu, sending her to the Marvel Universe. As Naruto woke up 5 days later, as Krama explained that he was out for 5 days, Naruto didn't snap open his eyes as the Ancient One was there, the woman that teach Doctor Strange. As she brought Naruto with her, Naruto then spent some time at the monastery as he was training with the others. As he met and got a few friends there, Naruto also learned the language of this new world, Chinese and all that. As Naruto read a book about the Infinity Stones, and he was surprised as he went to her and asked her how didn't she tell him about this. As she told him she didn't trust him at first, it has just been one month. But since now, as she told him he need the space stone. As she told him it was last seen in Norway. As she opened a portal. As Nurta thanked her for her hospitality as he headed off. Some time passed as Nurta learned about this man called Tony Stark. Who was coming out as Iron Man. And he also saw a big green monster trying to destroy the world. As Krama chuckled. Imagine what would happen if they saw him. As Naruto was walking in Norway, as everyone was staring at him, it was really strange. Oh, because of his whiskers, he thought. As Naruto went into a local coffee shop, as he went and got a coffee. On his receipt, he saw a phone number. He learned that phones are in this world, something you can use to call people. As a girl gave him her number, she then started to blush. Suddenly a man came and sat down the eye patch and a black trench coat. His name was Nick Fury as he told Naruto that he was a part of a secret government agent and he told Naruto and showed Naruto the photos of when Naruto dropped from a high distance in this world and then got out of the hospital and now he's completely fine. As Naruto told him he doesn't have a problem with him and he's not here to destroy the world or anything as Nick Fury had everyone in the cafe stood up as all of them were agents as they point their gun at Naruto but Naruto told them he would prefer if they lower their weapons or things would get nasty as Nick Fury saw his eyes. He then told everyone to lower their weapons as Naruto told them that he didn't came to harm them. As Nick Fury told him he will help him and give him the information of the stone to get back to his world if he does something for him. So Naruto accepted. Nick Fury then brought Naruto to one of his secret bases as he told Naruto about the revolution and also Hitler as Hitler had a friend who is going to become to known as Red Skull. As Red Skull face off against Captain America. When Captain America in Hydra long back then. But Hydra was coming back together. And they have found sightings of Hydra members in a long base. And also they were bringing some strange equipment. As Nick Fury told Naruto he will give my team. And the explosive to destroy the place. And bring back the perpetrator. As Krama Chuck when he heard explosive. This man doesn't even know that you're a walking bomb. So yeah guys, that was basically the last part we left off. You guys can switch across the place and take it up yourself. So, let's start this new episode. 
Naruto was waiting on the team and the leader of the team is going to be Agent Romanoff. As Naruto couldn't help but marvel at the technology that this world had. While his was nowhere primitive, they were far far away from reaching what this planet had. Some time passed as Naruto was in something going rather fast as he had to brace himself. His teammates were in there as well. Agent Romanoff or Natasha as she recently introduced herself was sitting rather calmly. Next to her was a middle aged man named Phil Coulson and across from Coulson was Brock Romlow. As Brock looked rather tough and he also seemed very cocky and Naruto could sense some hidden anger under his demeanor. Naruto looked over to Natasha. So was it real? Was what real Natasha asked? The telephone number Naruto said. Who called their phone a telephone anymore? Said Brock looking over at Naruto as if he was an idiot. Well what am I supposed to call it? Naruto asked as he really wanted to know. As Romanoff smirked. It's called a cell phone, but most people just call them phones. She then flipped her ear slightly as she batted her eyes at Naruto. And of course I did, she said. As Naruto nodded, so what's the point of it exactly? As it was Coulson who spoke, you use it to talk to people. I know that, but what's the point when you can just talk to someone face to face? Well, you can't talk to people far away, and if you can't do it in person also, said Coulson. It just seemed like a waste of money to me, said Naruto. As Coulson turned to Natasha, you actually gave him your number? No, she said. Well, why the hell would you tell me you did then? Nerta asked. As Natasha smirked, why not? She said. Suddenly, the pilot started to speak over the intercoms. We will be flying over Georgia in five minutes. The three agents got up and made their way to the four bags sitting to the door. As Nerta looked at them in confusion, what are those? He asked. Once again, Romulo looked at Naruto as if he was an idiot. They're parachutes. Seeing Naruto was still confused, he added, they were for slowing your fall. Here, he said, as he handed Naruto the last parachute. Naruto looked it over. So, we're jumping out of the plane, right? As everyone nodded. Okay, I don't need this then, he said. The three didn't get to argue as the door opened as a wind, making it impossible to talk any longer. As Naruto walked over, as he gave him a quick salute, as he jumped through. You ready Kurama, Naruto said. Hell yeah, Kurama said, as he pushed his chakra into his partner. As Naruto activated his yellow cloak, as he had on the Sage of Six Pass ceiling all over him, he still had the god power he got when he was facing off against Kaguya. As Naruto was coming down directly in the Hydra base, as Naruto expanded chakra hands from his shoulder, all the agents saw was Naruto going down a blur and then BOOM as he smacked into the base. Thank god it was in the middle of the night so they wouldn't be spotted. No, all they had to do was sit back and watch the show. Holy shit, shouted Brock. As he watched a blue ball in Naruto's hand slam right into the side of the building as it exploded a great portion of it. Suddenly the base came surrounded by several bright yellow dots smashing the base all over. They were far away so they couldn't see completely. How are we supposed to get any information with this guy destroying everything? Also wondered as he too was amazed at the sight of power this person was showing. As he saw Naruto jumped away from Eric Williams who had a strange sight in his hand, he was attacking Naruto. Finally, the three reached the ground as Natasha pressed her earpiece. Naruto, I know we said destroy the base but we're gonna need you to take it easy. For us to get the information we need, understood? Yeah, I got it. I'm kind of having fun anyway, Naruto responded. Naruto ducked as the guy was swinging a large sight at him. As the guy was pretty pissed off, Naruto was destroying his base. He wore a long, sleeve black shirt with matching combat pants and boots. As he had clean shaven hair and a soul patch on his chin, giving him a rather douchey appearance. As the shirt he wore had a big skull and crossbones on it. As Naruto ducked and dodged his slashes, Obviously, this guy was a hygienine, as this guy was a hygienine, Naruto could read his movements rather easily, and that's just not fair to what Naruto is now. As the Reaper sent the side towards Naruto, as Naruto deflected it with his arm, as the Reaper looked shocked, as Naruto then slammed his open palm right into the man's chest, he was sent flying back a few yards, 
until he collapsed on the ground, holding his chest in pain. As Naruto jumped up and down, moving back and forth in a fighting motion, I've been pretty bored with this planet, don't make it even worse. Eric growled for a second, alright, let's see how you like this, freak. As he pressed a button on the bottom of his sight, as the blade of his sight started to spin as it turned into a propeller, a high speed, like a holocaust propeller. Naruto smirked, ah, so you have an ace in the hole, alright, I'm down. As Naruto held out his hand and created a Rasengan, as he looked back at the Grim Reaper, as Naruto waited for him to make a move, we've got what we need Naruto. Go not, said Natasha over the comms. Almost like that was a signal, Eric ran towards him, trying to blend Naruto into a liquid with his propeller blade. As the Grim Reaper swung it towards Naruto, as Naruto vanished in a yellow flash, he looked around wondering where Naruto went. As he then felt an intense pain in his side, it was like a drill drilling right into him. Rasengan, Naruto said, as he was sent flying into one of the remaining walls that were left as he crashed hard. Looking around, Naruto saw flames, rubble, and his clones destroying the rest of the Hydra base. Krama, I think we should pull out one of the big guns, said Naruto. Are you sure? I thought you wanted to keep your abilities under wraps as much as possible, Krama asked. I am not saying I go 6 path sage mode, just take a beast mode. I just want to show Nick Fury and everyone on this planet that I'm not someone to mess with. As Naruto presses Anne on the earpiece, you guys need to get out of here as far as you can. Alright, we've gotten a hold of the SUV. Should I ask why though, she asks. I am doing what Fury wanted me to do. I'm gonna blow this shit up. That sounded really cheesy, she said. Uh -huh, sorry about that. We should be a couple miles out in a few minutes. How exactly are you going to catch up with us? Natasha asks. As Naruto stopped when he heard the Green Reaper groan in pain. Oh yeah, you. Don't worry, I'll get to you, Naruto said. As he then started to walk towards Eric Williams. Williams looked up, blood gushing down the side of his face, his organs and ribcage shifting with each breath that he take. What the hell are you, he said, as he coughed up some blood. Naruto didn't say anything at first, he only kneeled down. I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't really like killing. But knowing what you people have done and what you represent as a group, I can't let people like you walk around. Even if I'm not from here. As Naruto jumped high up in the air, as he exerted his partner's chakra, once again there was a flash of yellow as he covered the area like a mini sun. When it vanished, Naruto was covered in a titanic avatar of a nine-tailed fox. It's nine tails swinging dangerously. You ready, Kurama? Naruto said. Hell yeah, said Kurama, as Naruto slammed his hands together. As Kurama opened his jaw, as a small ball started to form, as it started to grow and grew and grew and grew, as it then finally reached maximum. Tail beast bomb, both Kurama and Naruto said as they launched the bomb, as everything in front of them was annihilated. With the shield agents, what the hell? Brock said as he saw the Hydra base. It was like he got nuked by a nuclear bomb. A dome of white energy burst up in the sky, blowing away all the clouds revealing the bright moon. Eventually, the attack faded as Naruto monstrous form was gone, along with the building that turned into ash. Coulson wiped the sweat off his brow. How exactly are we going to explain this to Director Fury? I don't even believe it, and I'm here seeing it with my eyes. As Natasha was still staring at where Naruto destroyed the Hydra base, all Director of Fury had to do was see the crater in the ground, and he will know what this guy is capable of. Well, who give a shit about Fury? This is above him. Just imagine when the Secretary appears here about this, or the World Council Security, for that matter. This guy is a monster! Romlo yelled, obviously frightened by what he just saw. A monster, huh? said Naruto, as the three of them were shocked as they turned around to see Naruto leaning against the vehicle. As Naruto looked perfectly fine, like he didn't just come back from destroying the entire base, turning it into ash. What the hell did you do back there? What are you? Agent Kosa asked. As Naruto scratched his chin, I bet you guys are second guessing to try and pick a fight with me when we just met. That move I just used, that is not even my strongest. 
Hell, it could have been way stronger, but I didn't want you guys to be caught in the aftermath. As Nurtin then turned to Natasha. Now, Natasha, I believe we had a deal. Natasha stared Nurtin in the eye, as she wondered if he was telling the truth about his power. You're right, we do. Get in the car, I will call in a Queen Jack. Where are we going, Nurta Axe? The Triskelion, she said. What the hell is that, Nurta Axe? Sheila headquarters, she said. Time skip, location, Washington, D.C. So what exactly are we dealing with here? As Nick Fury was currently in a rather large office, behind him was a brilliant view. From the large windows, across from him was a man in his 70s wearing an expensive business suit. This man was Alexander Pierce, Secretary of the World Security Council. Secretary Pierce was a middleman between WSC and SHIELD, making sure that both parties were kept up to date on each other. As Nick took a seat across from Pierce, you have seen the pictures, I'm guessing. Pierce noted, along with the entire council, they're not exactly happy that we have a literal nuke walking around unsupervised. Fury sigh. Well, from what I've seen, the kid has experienced war, and I'm not talking about a civilian, but as a soldier. That, and also he told us that his home world is used to use child as soldiers. And him was one of them. When I debrief him on his mission, the kid didn't even flinch at enemy casualties. Is he stable? Pierce asks. Nick closes one eye. He hasn't shown any sign of instability, or at least more stable than other people I've dealt with in this kind of situation. The secretary leaned back in his chair. Give me a full assessment from your point of view. His name is Naruto Uzumaki, age 15 to 17. He is humanoid in appearance. His only difference is those whisker marks on his cheeks. He seems very intelligent, but he hides it behind a mask of being naive. From what footage we can recover, he is very good at hand to hand combat. Being able to disarm with little effort on his part. On the mission, he showed very different abilities, his body covered in a yellow glow and blue spinning spears, disc of energy. He is also able to create a giant fox creature with nine tails behind it. In said avatar state, he was able to fire off an atomic bomb. It was smaller in size though and it lacked in any radiation after the aftermath. According to Agent Romanoff, he told him the attack he used wasn't at full strength. He was holding back so it would reach Romanoff or his team. Secretary Pierce rubbed the side of his head. So, what threat level he asks? As Fury didn't hesitate, threat level, Omega. Pierce sink deeper into his chair. That is two people to become threat, Omega. In two months, Nick, what the hell is going on? I think this is a universe telling us that something is coming and it's giving us the pieces to fight whatever it is. First Tony Stark, then Dr. Bruce. Now we have an alien from a different dimension that is so powerful you would think that he's a comic book character come to life. We've been giving these men for a reason Alex, a big reason. Pierce shook his head, would you drop the Avenger program already? The council doesn't support it and neither do I. Having those three together is a dangerous thing. Imagine the damage they can do before they were taken out, that is even if we can take them out. And imagine what they can do as a team, working to make a difference, Nick said. Pierce sigh, even if the council approve of your program, you will never able to get them to work together. Tony Stark Being a good example, sadly, the man is nothing like his father. As Pierce then look on the deck, Snurter's report, and he is still young and inappreciable. Fury shook his head. I already said that the kid is smart, even if you do succeed in manipulating him, he would eventually figure it out and turn the Triskelion into a parking lot. The Triskelion was the main public headquarter of SHIELD, the building being strange enough as it was in the middle of the river, outline of the main island. Do you think you can control him then? Pierce asked. Fury, fold his arm across his chest, control him? No, keep an eye on him, yes. Tell the council that I'll keep a close eye on him and tell them not to do anything stupid. With Naruto, what the hell is taking so long? This place is boring, Naruto said, leaning his head back in a chair that he was sitting in. Agent calls a sigh. Director Fury is having an important meeting right now. He will get here when he gets here. Naruto leaned his chair on the back two legs as he rests his foot on the table. So what exactly do you do? 
That's classified, the man said. Where's Natasha at? Black Widow location is none of your concern at the moment. Black Widow, said Naruto. Agent Romanoff, code name. Do you have a code name? No. Why, Narta asks. I don't know. I feel like you do, but you're not telling me. As Coulson just went quiet, seeing that he was getting the silent treatment, Narta sighed. If it's any consolation, I never had a code name back home. Coulson wasn't going to respond as Fury walked into the room. I'm sure you're ready for me to give you my side of the bargain, Naruto, and I won't waste your time. As he sat down in a chair across from Naruto, another folder in his hand, this one labeled S. Rogers. As he then placed the folder on the table, according to one of the founders of S.H.I.E.L.D., Howard Stark, the Tesseract is capable of sustaining an infinite amount of energy. As I told you before, it was once in Norway, where it was kept safe for thousands of years. However, during World War II, Hydra Commander discovered where the Tesseract was and used the invasion as a way to find and acquire it. It was with it that he used to advance his weapons. He then did his master plan to create that aircraft to fly over and bomb the United States with the power of the Tesseract. In a last diff effort, Captain America sacrificed his life and crashed the aircraft in the Arctic. So what happened to the Tesseract? Did you find it near to ask? Nick Sai, the Tesseract was in the aircraft with Captain America by the time we figure out the general era that it crashed, it has been frozen over countless times. So, it's lost, Naruto said. I'm sorry, Naruto. I knew you had your hopes for this to work out, said Krama, feeling the disappointment rolling from Naruto. Nick nodded as he thought something over. I would like to make a deal with you, Naruto. Naruto got up from his seat. Sorry, Fury, but I'm not going to work for you and your shield. Nick got up as he walked behind Naruto. I don't want you to work for me. I want to work with you. We both have a common interest, the Tesseract. Why not work together here? As Naruto stopped, what are you suggesting, Fury? What I'm saying is that we work together, Shield, as several teams working to find Captain America and the Tesseract. We're going to find the Tesseract eventually. The question is, are you going to be here when we do? As Naruto narrowed his eyes, I thought what I did to that Hydra base was warning enough. Do not try to manipulate me, Fury. Or you won't live to regret it. Fury raised his hand. I am not trying to manipulate you. I am not trying to trick you. This is a legitimate offer. You work with us until the test rack is found. And you will be allowed to use it to get home. No matter how much I hate to admit it, it will be probably a good idea to stay with these fools until you get what you want. And it's not like you can't take care of them if they prove to be too much trouble, said Krama. Fine, said Naruto. But there are going to be some rules. First, I'm not going to be your dog on a leash. Second, if I don't want to do something, I won't. Third, when you find the Tesseract, I'm the first one you call. Not that Pierce guy. Not the World Council or whatever. Me, okay? And fourth. Well, I haven't really thought of the fourth. But when I do, you'll know. Seeing Nick nodded in confirmation, Nerta extended his hand in a face. As Fury looked at the face. As he reached his own face out and bump face with Naruto. Time skip. Location, Malibu, California. May 30, 2010. Two years has passed. I still don't get why I'm here, Naruto said. As he sat next to Phil in a shield SUV. In the two years of being on Earth, Naruto's appearance has taken on a change. As usually, Messi here was brought to the side now, but he still had a messy look. Whatever baby fat he had on his face was now gone, looking more lean and mature. Speaking of his face, his whisker marks were missing, thanks to some kind of artificial thing over his cheeks. Allow him to blend into human society perfectly. The decision had been a tough one. His whisker marks has been a part of him his entire life, and it just didn't seem right to hide them. But he knew it would make it easier for him to live on Earth. And also, if people want to find him, it would be rather quickly seeing that he was noticeable, seeing that he had whisker marks. Similar to Coulson, Naruto was wearing a black jacket with a white t-shirt underneath it and black pants. And standard shoes. He would usually wear something more comfortable, but Phil insisted. Director Fury wants us to watch over Tony Stark. He's working on a cure for his ailment. 
and we're here to make sure that he doesn't get sidetracked, said Phil. It just seemed like a waste of my skills. I'd rather be out with Natasha or Clint, doing field mission. At least then I could get some monthly quota of violence and mayhem. And you wonder why they gave you the code name Maelstrom, Colson said, as he was probably sore that Nerto got a code name and he still doesn't have one. Nerto scoff, it's a stupid name. Orange Flash is way better. No, it isn't, said Colson. It really isn't, Naruto, said Krama. Naruto decided to change the subject. So this Tony guy, what is he like? His personality is describing his file as Naruto rubbed the back of his head. As Phil sigh, you didn't read the file, did you? Naruto folded his arms across his chest. I am not one of you shield agents. I don't have to do crap, he said. Phil sigh, as he knew Naruto was right. The only reason why Naruto was here was because he needed some money to buy an apartment in DC. So Fury told him he owed him a favor. This mission being said favor. Any other time it was the only reason because Naruto wanted to do things. Missions with Agent Romanoff and the others. As she took Naruto under her wings, showing him video games, movies, sporting events, the internet. The council wasn't really happy about him not taking orders. But at least he wasn't roaming around doing God knows what. At least he was under the watchful eye of Nick Fury. Looking out the window, Coulson saw that they were pulling into the Stark Mansion driveway. We're here. Getting out of the SUV, Naruto looked up. Wow, he said, as he looked at the giant mansion. As they walked up to the double doors, as Coulson didn't even knock, he just barged right in, and Naruto followed behind him. As they saw Tony Stark looking out the window, giving him a one look over, Naruto could say he wasn't different from his picture. Black hair with his goatee. He looked kind of pathetic at the moment, as the place was kind of a mess. And he was still wearing a robe in the middle of the day. That didn't help much either. Sitting next to Tony was Fury. The two of them just finished their conversation. Looking over at Coulson and Naruto, Fury spoke. I believe you are the make Agent Coulson, and this is Agent Uzumaki. Naruto held back a scowl, as he didn't like to be called Agent as he couldn't wait till his favor was over so he could get out of here. They're going to be staying here and watching over you until you're done. Babysitters, really? The blonde one looked like he should be in high school. Naruto narrowed his eyes at Tony, but he kept his mouth shut. Agent Uzumaki is more than qualified to make sure you stay here and finish your work, Tony. If you're really concerned, you can put your armor on and he can give you a demonstration. As Fury then make his way towards the door. Get it done, Tony. We're gonna need you. Naruto rolled his eyes to Fury and his instant every time talking about these stupid adventures. The countless of time Naruto ignored him when he asked him to get involved. Natasha, who was in the other room, came in after Fury left. We have disabled all communications. No contact with the outside world. Looking over at Naruto, she said good luck. So this is where Natasha has been, Naruto thought. Tony, who thought that Natasha was speaking to him, he spoke. Alright, first thing first, I need a little body work, then I'll put some time in the lab. Hey kid, make yourself useful and go on a Starbucks run. Colson stepped in, we're not here for that, he said. Director Fury has given us orders to use any means necessary to keep you on the premises. Understood? Yeah, I think I got it, said Tony. Later that night, do you really think that we never noticed you leaving, Nerta said. As he walked into Tony's workshop, the entire era covered with equipment. Tony looked up. I don't remember you trying to stop me, Agent Uzumaki. And where is Coulson anyway? Naruto walked around the room as he stopped at the display of the Iron Man armor. Agent Coulson was called for an urgent matter by Fury. As for me, despite what Fury said, I am no agent. I don't have to really do what he says. So I let you do your business. I only kept an eye on you in case you make a break for it. And I'm only here because I owe Fury a favor. That and I wanted to meet you, Naruto said, as he turned and faced Tony. And why exactly do you want to meet me? Do you want an autograph or something? Last I checked, I charged 20 bucks for those, Tony said. No, I just wanted to meet the other members of Fury, possible adventures. You're all the man talks about. That and Bruce Banner, but that guy has gone ghost after Harlem. Tony couldn't help but being shocked to hear that his kid was in the same group as himself. So what makes you so special that they asked you to join? 
Before Nerky could answer, Phil walked down the steps into the lab. I heard you broke the perimeter. Oh yeah, that was a while ago. Where have you been? Junior and I have already discussed this. Dropping the previous subject for a later time. I've heard you've been busy. Phil gave Naruto a pointed look. First you let him leave, then you tell him where I went. After I told you to keep it under wraps, I thought you said you would do as you were told today. Naruto shrugged. I'm a little scamp, what can I say? Besides, I did keep an eye on him. That, and it looks like he actually got something out of his little field trip. As he saw that Tony seemed rather calm than before, and he wasn't on edge anymore. Cole's attention was on something else though, as he walked over to the table that seemed like scrap, as it was a shield that was half made. The shield was circular, with three layers of color, and in the center, holding a five point star. The first and third layer were red, the middle layer white, with the center layer blue. What's this doing here, Phil asked. A realization hit Tony. That's it. As he walked up to Phil, give it to me. Do you know what this is? Phil asked. Yeah, it's exactly what I need, said Tony. Now, I'm gonna be busy. What do you want? Nothing. Director Fury has resigned me. I'm going to be in New Mexico, said Phil. What about me? Nerta asked. You can leave anytime you want. Director Fury wants to meet with you when you get back to DC though. As Naruto walked upstairs, I think I'll stay for tonight. I hear there's gonna be an expo. Might just see what Natasha's doing, Naruto said as he went off. Time skip at Stark Industries. What are you doing here, Naruto? asked Natasha as she was wearing her assistant uniform. The two were standing outside the office. Natasha had pushed him out after he barged in. As Naruto gave a smile, just wants to see Black Widow, the assistant in action, he said. You're pretty good at it, he said, as she punched him right in the stomach. Don't call me that here, got it, she said. As Naruto was hunched over as he whisked out, got it, he said. As she pushed away the hair, seriously, what are you doing here? Colson has been reassigned. I didn't exactly stick around to nowhere, but I figure I'll come help you out. Since I have nothing better to do, said Naruto. Natasha scoffed as she made her way back in the office. Go bother Clint or one of the others then. As she opened the door and entered, I'm sorry, she said. That was... But Naruto didn't hear anything else as the door closed behind her. As Naruto sighed, I guess I'll have to go to that expo by myself then, he thought. Later that night at the Stark Expo. Damn, this place was crazy. As each event shows some new tech. Walking around as Naruto was now wearing a red jacket with a blue t-shirt underneath. Some simple jeans as he feel way better getting out of that monkey suit. As Naruto walked over to the stage as he could see several signs coming up with a new event, Hammer Industries presents in the defense of peace, Naruto read off. This better be good, he said. As Naruto saw a man in a grey suit start a dance and walk out to the stadium. Ladies and gentlemen, he said once he reached. For far too long this country has a place its brave man and woman in harm. Then the Iron Man arrived, and we thought the days of losing life was behind us. Sadly, that technology was kept out of reach. That's not fair, it's not right, and it's just too bad. Regardless, it was impressive, one that grabbed headlines the world over. Well today my friends, the press is faced with a different problem. They are about to run out of ink. As the awkward silence entered the arena, with Naruto watching the amusement, as people start to give the man a pity clap. Ladies and gentlemen, today I present the new face of the United States military. Then with a wave of his arm, some Iron Man ripoff came behind him that looked like military drones with rocket launchers and cannons on their body. In total, there were 32 of them on that stage. But as revolutionary as this technology is, there will always be a man that is present in theory of war. Ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to represent you the first prototype of the Varial Threat, the Response Battle Suit and its pilot, Air Force, Lieutenant Colonel James. With another wave of his hand, the center of the stage opened up with a door coming up as it revealed a grey 
and silver version of Iron Man suit. But this one was decked out for heavy combat. Heavy armored with the four arms holding high power mini guns and automatic weapons holster behind him on the shoulders. For America, the Alliance, the Hammer Industries is, but he was cut off as Tony came on the stage coming in hot. As he landed in a kneeling position, as Iron Man got up, the entire lit up with cheers as everyone was now talking. As Tony walked up to the silver suit and stood next to him and gave him a wave. As Tony armor was slightly different, his circular reactor was no triangular. Where is he? said Tony. As the suit then point his weapon at Tony and start a fire as Tony had to fly up in the air. As the drones start a fire at the crowd as Naruto jumped in the way and activated his cloak as they were bouncing off of him. As all of the drones then turned towards Naruto and started blasting with their weapons. When they were finally finished Naruto asked, you done? As several arms then shot from his cloak grabbing the drones and smashing them like they were empty cans. As Naruto then started to form two miniature Rasen shuriken in his palms as he threw them at the remaining army drones, blowing them to pieces and the explosion wasn't that big. As Naruto formed four Rasengan behind him, as he created four chakra arms and grabbed the Rasengans, driving them into the drones, destroying them. What the hell man? The guy who introduced the thing said, do you have any idea how much those things cost? Naruto chakra cloak flickered. Not enough, apparently, he said. As he then heard gunfire where Tony and Rode was fighting. As he went over there, when he came, he saw Tony. I'd finished destroying all the rest of the other useless drones. As Rode was the only one left. Hey, Tony, you good? Nerd asked. Is that you, Junior? Said Tony. As Nerd nod. As Rode looked between the two of them. Tony, who the hell is this guy? Junior, meet Rode. Rody, meet Junior. The three of them then heard a thud as another drone landed. This one was heavily armored. It's good to be back, said a voice, which Naruto recognized as a Russian accent. Well, this isn't going to be good, Rody said. The Russian man then created lightning whips. I've got something special for this guy, Rody said. I'm going to bust his bunker with the ex-wife. The what, said Tony. A rocket emerged from the shoulder of the suit as it flew towards the Russian guy. But it didn't even hurt the suit. Well that was disappointing, Tony said. I have got, but he was cut off. As Naruto glowing fist slammed right into Ivan as he was sent flying. Sorry Tony, Naruto said as he walked forward. But I'd rather handle this quick and fast. Now let's see how you hold up to my win rusting shuriken, Naruto said. As Naruto started to form a rusting shuriken, as Ivan got up, and was about to latch out his whips, not to release it. Boom! But guys, be in this episode right here. If you want to see the next part of this, you already know what to do. Like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn the bell notifications they posted. Remember to share to all of your friends in your social media platform. But for now, I'm out of here, guys. Peace.